It is hot in this cab. <sighs> Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I've got the John Deere 8270R out again. This morning, I've got a little bit of work to finish off over at Farm 2. There's um, a bit of field work to finish off over there this morning. It's trying to rain, uh, and the forecast does say it's going to chuck it down later. So, fingers crossed I can beat the rain. I've only got a couple of hours work to uh, finish off over there. I'm going to get the tractor sorted now. The air filter and cab filter need a bit of a blowout because it's been pretty dusty where I've been working. So, I'm going to get that sorted, and then I'll head over. As you can see today, I'm using a subsoiler. This is a Cousins V-Form seven leg subsoiler. What I'm doing is this field I'm in, I chisel plowed up yesterday, and now I am crossing my work in the other direction with the subsoiler, mainly because it's got this great big packer on the back, this press here. This is gonna help work down what I plowed up yesterday, help break up those clods, um, and help preserve the moisture. Obviously the legs themselves are gonna be doing a good job working the soil as well. I'm not actually subsoiling as deep as I would be normally if I was doing a proper subsoiling job. But like I said, the main reason I'm using this bit of kit is the packer on the back to help work down what I plowed up yesterday. Somebody did point out in the video where I was chisel plowing the other day, um, why, why haven't we got something, you know, like a sumo, you know, like a three in one, a disc, uh, a disc tine and press all in one type cultivator. Now the reason we don't have one is we're sort of trying trying to be sort of 100% direct drilling. I suppose at the moment we're sort of more like 80 to 90% direct drilling, but for the amount of cultivation that we actually do, it's not really worth investing in, in a bit of kit like, like that. And we've sort of developed this little system now where if, if there is some cultivation that needs doing, we go in first with the chisel plow and then in with the subsoil with the packer on the back. And it, and it does a good job. It's a nice little system we've, we've got going. One idea we have had is to maybe sort of make up a packer, a press for the back of the chisel plow. That way we are only doing sort of one, one par. So that's, that's an idea, maybe a winter project. Uh, somebody else pointed that out as well. Why don't we do that? But that's definitely an idea we've had in the past. I thought what I'd do this morning is, for those who don't know, now I'm probably gonna be explaining something that a lot of you do know, but I thought it might be interesting for those who don't. I thought I'd do a little demonstration on how the, the GPS, the auto steer, the auto track guidance works in the tractor. Uh, Cause obviously you saw me put on the big yellow dome on the top of the tractor, the Starfire receiver so I thought I'd do a little quick demonstration on how that works you can see uh, how the tractor can drive itself so we're running this um, tractor with a Starfire 6000 receiver which is up on the roof I'll just show you guys how we set up the auto track then on the bottom here it says guidance we click that and what we want to do is we want to be setting a new track so we sort of call them them runs or bouts but in this case they're called a track so we're going to set a new track I'm not actually going to set a new track I'm just sort of going through the system just to show you obviously I've already set it up because I've already started the field but what we do is we click set track new track we're just going to do a nice simple A to B method so we click A to B you can call it you know whatever you want to call it click OK takes us back to the auto track screen here now imagine we're sort of parked up where we want to start our run we would click set a drive a few meters click set b you have now configured your straight run obviously you need to put in 
your track space and your working width. In this particular case, this bit of kit's about four meters, so I've set it at 3.75, just to allow a little bit of overlap. So we're gonna cancel this because I've already set one up. So basically now it's configured, we can turn the auto track on, it's now telling me I can press the resume switch to activate. That switch is this button here that says auto. So every time I press this, it will turn onto uh, the next track and the steering, you know, the auto track steering will take over and steer for me. Now obviously I'm turning at the end of each run, I'm turning on, on and off the headland myself. But when I turn back onto the run, I click the uh, auto button and the steering takes over and keeps me uh, at a nice straight line. So I'll just show you guys how that works now. So I'll go forward. I'm turning onto my track, I'll press the button. The beep tells me it's found the mark. I'll put the bit of kit down. And now it is steering itself and keeping a nice straight line as well. So for those of you who've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that I'm sort of still into my old kit as well, you know, the old school stuff. We still run a couple of old Ford tractors as well. Um, but I thought it was just worth showing you the auto track in the John Deere because uh, it, it is pretty cool having a tractor that can uh, drive itself and keep a nice straight line for you. A lot of people argue it's lazy. I think it's actually a good thing. I, I think it can actually make, make things a lot more productive um, in the field, especially when it comes to a job like uh, drilling where the operator's got a lot to think about because a job like drilling, there, there, there is a lot, lot to think about, a lot of things that can go wrong. So if you can sort of set up the track to sort of keep a straight line for you and steer for you, it means you can sort of spend more time checking what's going on behind, checking everything's set right and everything's running right. So in that respect, I think the auto track is good. Obviously today, subsoiling, I don't really need it, but seeing as I'm in the tractor, I may as well use it as well. Um, and obviously it's given me a chance to show you guys sort of how it works. So. I'm gonna get the rest of this field worked off. Uh, There's just sort of a couple, couple of hours work here. Um, and then I'll uh, be heading back to the yard. So I've got a bucket of sprayer nozzles. There was a couple uh, nozzles on the sprayer that uh, were blocked a little bit. So we've had them all off, taken apart, the tiny little fiddly things. So yeah, we took them all apart, had them soaking and uh, made sure they were all clear. So now I've got the fun job of putting them all back on. <laughs> and it's another hot day today. So these are the two that were blocked. Um, I'll put them on the end here so they're easy to spot. But um, I know it's a bit overkill having them all off. Um, but you can't be too careful. You don't, you don't want a leaky nozzle, um, especially 
on the back there in the, in the middle where you can't see um, when you're spraying. So they've all, they've all been off, they've all had a soak, they've all had a, had a clear through. So I'll run some water through it a bit later um, and we'll just double check that they're, they're all okay. I'm just uh, shifting some stuff out of the way so I can bring the combine into one of the sheds because um, there's going to be some thunderstorms later. It's <laughs> blooming hot now, so you know, quite refreshing really when when the rain gets here. But um, hope it doesn't come too much because I've actually got a little bit more work to do over at Farm Two cultivating. So um, anyway, the, the combine's going to be better being brought in. Uh, plus, there's a couple of jobs to do to it as well. There's not going to be time today to do them, but. Um, at least it'll be in the shade as well um, for when we do do it because it's uh, I think it's going to be a hot week in between these thunderstorms so yeah It is hot in this cab. Whew. One of the jobs we've got to do it's only cosmetic but this big dent here uh, this is the the cover for the air, air filter pre-cleaner and we do not know what happened we think a tree bow must have hit it we've retraced our steps and we can't figure out what's happened there but we've had a, a steel plate made up uh, to fit this so we're going to sort of pop that on top it's got a lip on here hopefully it's going to sort of pull it straight when we put it on so that's one job to do and for those wondering about harvest because everything was spring drilled we're just uh we're, we're a week or two well a few weeks behind everybody else it seems everyone seems to be either combining or finished combining and we're still a week or two away from starting but um yeah at least it's all the combines in the shade now so we can uh, do those a uh, couple of bits uh me, me and dad will do those together um between us when we uh, when we when we get a chance So yeah, thanks for watching everybody. I think I'm gonna leave the video here. I'm gonna go and find some shade somewhere. <laughs> um, but thanks for watching. If you like the video, be sure to give it a nice big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe and tap the little bell as well, because that notifies you when I put a new video up. So thanks for watching everybody. Stay safe, stay well, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.